Well, global circumstances really decreed that the 52 Super Series in 2021 was a short and very intense, unlike anything we've ever experienced before. Three regattas confined mainly to Spain's Balearic Islands, Mallorca and Menorca, started in August and really put the pressure on from the very beginning. For all that there was a long layoff, the TP52 owners and crews returned to the race course with a really renewed passion and vigour. It's fantastic being, uh, being back on the water. Great. After 18 months or 16 months, nice, good. In the beginning it feels a little bit rusty, but right now it's okay. After almost two years, we are all happy. The first regatta, the Puerto Portal's 52 Super Series Sailing Week, saw the return of some familiar names and some new faces. And to the owners who couldn't travel, but made sure that their yachts and their teams raced, a big thank you. It also served as the TP52 20th Anniversary Invitational Regatta, drawing nine boats of different 52 generations dating right back to 2005. And so, Puerto Portales was a great opportunity to reflect on the longevity and the success of the TP52 fleet in the Mediterranean and to look back at some chapters of history and to write new ones and look forward. In this place is where in 2004 owners shake hands. And at that stage, we didn't know how long it was going to last, but uh, look at that, it was 16 years ago now. And Puerto Portales is instrumental in the history of the class. In 2021, we're starting a new chapter, but eight invitational boats shared the stage with nine 52 Super Series boats. And returning to the fleet after a five-year absence are the Americans Austin and Gwen Fragerman on a new-to-them interlodge. It feels great to be back. We have uh, no illusions that we have a uh, tough competition out here, so we want to hang in there with the front of the fleet if we can. And back from America's Cup campaigns, our longtime adversaries Terry Hutchison returning to Quantum Racing and Vasco Vascotto on Brunerisek. It's very exciting because um, there is plenty of friends, plenty of enemy. <laughs> we'll have a nice battle in the water. Platoon opened the season by winning the first race in Puerto Portales, Quantum Racing win the second. If it all looks a little bit like a return to business as usual. Actually, there were many signs of rust through the fleet. Quantum, Platoon and Phoenix all struggling at times, taking penalties and uh, struggling on the start line just a little bit. And in the end, it was Takashi Akura's sled which won in Puerto Portales. Super consistent, only one point ahead of Quantum Racing. Phoenix in third with Tom Slingsby calling tactics. It's a shame Mr Okura's not here to enjoy it with us. We know he's back in Japan uh, watching us uh, every step of the way, so it's a great result for the team. But no doubt the highlight of that week was the 20th anniversary Invitational Day, which saw a full fleet of different generations all racing on the glittering Bay of Palma. This is an amazing circuit. We enjoy a lot of being invited here and and be able to race with them. It's just fantastic that the organisers invited all the IRC boats to be part of this. Menorca, always popular, always challenging and great open water race course, was the next destination. And the French team on Paprec returned to race in the Super Series for the first time since Cape Town. We are all very happy to be back here on the circuit. It's fantastic for us. It's been a long time since uh, Cape Town, so we are happy to be here. And the Whitcraft family from Thailand, well, they enjoyed the Invitational Regatta so much in Puerto Portales, they raced in Menorca, and their experience was so enjoyable, so intense, that they've promised to come back and compete all the way through the 2022 season. Well, the nice thing is, is uh, people have been very friendly, the other owners have been supportive. Really looking forward to uh, doing some of the Super Series through the next year. And theirs is proof that the circuit is open to all individuals and it's not just about firepower and big guns. Menorca did prove to be a real open venue with different wins and a real test. It underlined how incredibly close the fleet is now. Andy Soriano and the crew of Allegra set off an electric pace with three back-to-back -back race wins, showing great starts, good speed and absolutely looked to be on fire. But in the end it was Platoon who finished strongest with a fourth and then winning what proved to be the final race to win the regatta by two points from Allegra.
Our planet's living environment is in danger. The critical urgency of that message is perhaps growing globally, but it's practical, measurable steps taken by us all and solid strategies which can help us halt climate change and reduce global warming. Our legacy programme, our ambassadors give a direct, immediate interaction with the teams and their enthusiasm and passion really is our driving force now. We've just continued on with all the practices that we've put in place over the years. So we continue to try and use as little plastic as possible and just trying to take care of the planet as much as we can. For next year I'd like to see um, more sustainable clothing practices, certainly less packaging, more use of the recycling of the sails, perhaps even the spinnakers, trying to do something with those, making them into little supermarket holders. And our sustainability outreach tour, sustainability workshops for marinas and clubs, visiting and educating at seven major institutions this year, including in Valencia, Barcelona and Malmo, as well as our usual venues. No! Lighthouse initiatives include successfully testing robot course marks, the message being spread that they can and should be used more widely in the racing world. Similarly, the programme to redistribute uneaten food to local NGOs has been active at every regatta this year. In Puerto Portales, our unused food fed 60 people. Again, that's not just about feeding people in need, it's about us setting an example that other regattas, big and small, can follow. And for the big finale, for the first time ever, the Rolex TP52 World Championship is the decider for the 2021 circuit title. And this decisive showdown is sailed on the Bay of Palma. It's just a fabulous venue for sailing. The city's fabulous. The club's been magnificent hosting us here. We just uh, love the opportunity to be here. But this time it's November and the breezes this late in the season are much, much more unpredictable and challenging. It's um, a crazy week in November in Palma that the wind will be really difficult and different. Everything can happen because the fleet is super close and super strong. Quantum Racing start in Palma with a one point overall lead on the circuit, but they're only two points separating the top four boats, Sled and Defending World Champions Platoon and Allegra. This is pretty intense. You know, we knew coming into this that whoever wins this regatta probably is going to win the season. This whole regatta is going to get down to one or two points and we know that. Straight off on day one in light shifty breezes, Phoenix shoot themselves back into contention for the circuit with two race wins. The second day reinforces just what we suspected. Very shifty, patchy, moderate winds are taxing. Allegri bounce back with a race win on day two. Sled win the next race to strengthen their challenge. But consistency is absolutely key. Phoenix are again regatta leaders on day three and Sled top the circuit. The points are so close heading into tomorrow, it's anyone's game, but uh, we're just happy to be in the hunt. A little insight, what's the communication like? What's the dynamic? Ice cream and he execute. Yeah. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Penultimate day's race in a brisk, gusty offshore wind up to 25 knots at times. Quantum Racing bounce back when it counts and win the first race after pushing the risk equation a little bit more. Regatta leaders Phoenix are in good shape for a second place when they suddenly, their kite explodes in the final run. They lose four places and it proves a costly failure. Having to push the risk even more, Phoenix then jump the start gun and have to recross. While Sled run away to lead the race, the title are right within Platoon's grasp, but on the second beat, they lose places, and with that conclusive win, Sled finish the day with a one-point lead on both scoreboards. But the chances of a big finale were blown away by Gale Force wins on the Bay of Palma on the final day, and after a nervous morning, Takashi Akura's Sled team are crowned 2021-52 Super Series champions and Rolex TP52 world champions. <laughs> We've got a good team of guys and, and with Murray and Francesco in the back of the boat and, and the rest of the team sailed the boat really well. Super special on this Okura to give us the opportunity to do this season and luckily we've come through with the goods. It's still positive, it's, it's a great team and it's a great class. Every leg is a challenge, every race is a challenge, every regatta, so it's, it's a pleasure to be here. So Donuts, what do you think about this season? It was rough. And the final standings for the 52 Super Series 2021. Winners are Sled on 74 points, Quantum Racing on 75 points and third, Platoon on 76. Well that's it, the 52 Super Series 2021 is done and dusted. A chilly Palma finishing up, but it's been a great season.
Now as ever my quest is to get to the first venue for next season and I've got to have this beautiful new mode of transport, it's sustainable and it's green. I was pretty sure this time I was going to stay dry, but okay, let's give it a go. Well, it may be green, but it's bloody noisy. I feel like I'm forming quite a bond with this trolley. Travel budget. I need to, I need to talk about the travel budget for next year, because this is ridiculous. Every winter. Bayona. I don't even know where it is. Northwest of Spain. We're going to have to get a ferry, aren't we?